Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Help keep this content ad-free by supporting us on patreon.com slash archerygeek. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, archerypass.com, for all your traditional archery needs. Hey everyone. hey, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers, and we're here with Joellen. How are you doing? I am great. So this has been a long time coming. I, I don't even understand why you weren't the first guest on my show ever, because uh, you are an amazing trad archer. You epitomize trad archery. Well, you know, I absolutely passionately love it. I have been shooting a bow since 1989, and I got started with the compound and shot professional for years with the compound. And then the crazy thing is I got injured arm wrestling a big dude, and that kind of put me out of the competition scene for a while in 2003. And I got way more involved in bow hunting because I could shoot a few arrows, but the injury was uh, was severe enough that I couldn't pound my body like I needed to to stay at the top of the professional ranks. So, but I, but you I, got, so that so that was compound though, right? That and then, was compound. Yeah. When did you pick up a single string? In 2011, after I went to Africa and did the big five with the compound bow in 2009, I was looking for um, something else exciting and extremely challenging to do. And I thought I was going to do a marathon. Right. But um, but I didn't. I, I was... I have been very involved with uh, working with kids, doing archery with kids ever since 1993. So uh, an outdoor writer friend of mine invited me to Arkansas to do a kids fishing derby. And he said, while you're here, I got a favor to ask. I need you to, to work with this young man that just finished guide school He wants to learn how to tune his own bow, and he wants to learn how to fix his client's bows. And I I said, sure, let's do it. So I spent two days working with this young man, and we were staying in a cabin out on this guy's um, hunting property, and the mountain man cabin, and uh, David Mitchell... um, and Jake Scrape were the two guys that I was working with. And Mitchell pulled a, a Pearson recurve off the wall. And they went out in the yard and started shooting. Didn't even invite me to shoot with them initially. <laughs> and uh, after a while, I said, now, are you going to let me try this? And they said, you want to try it? I said, sure. So... I fell in love. It was absolutely, it was, it was just unbelievable how quickly I got addicted to it. And Jake is from Camden, Arkansas. There's a boyer there named Gene Steed that owns a barbershop and he makes a few custom uh, bows, mostly self bows. And they ask if he made me a bow. He's Jake was apprenticing with him. If they made me a bow, would I shoot it? And I said, heck yeah. <laughs> so uh, about a month later, they have me a bow. And I shot so much that my arms hurt to raise up the next day. Wow. I, I just I just fell in love with it. Yeah. And within a month, I, I told my friends, I said, next world championship I win will be with a traditional bow. Okay. We got time. I got time you out here because there's so much, there's so much there <laughs> that you went over. All right. Let's stop. Let's 
it, we're going to be all over the place, but it's okay. Let's let's do this. Okay. Go back to your Africa story. Okay. Tell us about that. Tell us about that first. So in in 2001, um, I had a girl come up to me at the ATA show and she said, I hear you're going to Africa to hunt Cape Buffalo. I said, I don't know who you got that from because I don't know anything about it. But after a few days of being at, at ATA and it keep kept coming up, I thought, maybe this is just what I need to do just to make me be the best that I could possibly be. And I started talking to some of my sponsors and um, SG Christian that owned Bodoodle Company. He said, I think it's exactly what you need to do. Go pray about it. The Lord will give you the answer. And it wasn't long before I had my answer. I go back home and I start putting things in order. Uh, a friend of mine that I'd gone to high school with had just opened a new gym. So I become a charter member um, and I started training and I was going through a divorce and I made contact with the attorney and I said, we've got to have a restraining order. I can't keep dealing with the crap. Okay. And so I was dealing with a lot of self-esteem issues and I thought if I train and do this Cape Buffalo hunt, it, it'll take everything Oh, It'll make up. me the best I can be. Yeah. And I'd never, I had no clue that I'd have to shoot over 80 pounds. And I ended up having to shoot 85 pounds in order to uh, get the kinetic energy to hunt a buffalo. So May the 1st of 2001, I go to Africa. May the 10th of 2001, I kill a Cape buffalo with a bow. Became the first lady to do it. Now, the night before I shoot that Cape Buffalo, I started having a dream, this vision that I was facing the Buffalo head on and he was drooling and blood running out his eyes. And I, I just kept waking up with that vision. Well, after I shoot the Cape Buffalo and we watch the video, there's this, it, it was exactly as the dream. Yeah, you, yeah. You there had was like a whole a... love behind the buffalo. The sun was going down and it, it was just absolutely amazing. So I did that in 2001 and the nature conservation officer told me, said, if you get where you can pull a hundred pounds, I'll get you an elephant tag. So I started working to pull a hundred pounds. And before long, I was shooting 104 pounds. But yeah, a Matthew Safari at 104 pounds compound. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so Valentine's Day, I arm wrestled this big dude that was there when I was planning my Cape Buffalo trip. And um he couldn't put me down, so he stood up and he slammed me. And when he did, I was resisting, and it detached a rib from my sternum. And it tore the tricep in my right arm. That's so I went from shooting 104 pounds to 40 pounds yeah. um, within a week. So... So that's that's an off that's terrible. Uh uh you know that that, that happened. But the but, good part of that is yeah. that you you had to get into re so traditional archery. You did some traditional archery, right? So so uh that was in 2003 that I got hurt. In 2009 I planned to hunt the big 5. The right. entire big five. Right, right, right. With, I forgot about that. Yeah, keep going. So I did the entire big five, starting with the line. I shot the lioness at six and a half yards. She come charging frontal. I shot her through the heart at six and a half yards. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's it's not crazy. even, that's I, insane. I actually, 
I actually shot three arrows in 12 seconds. Wow. He kept saying, shoot her again, shoot again. And I did. And she went 20 yards and was piled up. It, it was like, oh, my gosh. So I, after the line, we went to, um, to Zimbabwe and I shot, I hunted an elephant. We got charged by an elephant. They took down that elephant, and it took five days for me to get a tag for another elephant. So I got my tag, I got my elephant, and then we go back to South Africa, and I I hunt Cape Buffalo again and take another Cape Buffalo, this time at 14 and a half yards. They're big. They're crazy big. I shot it frontal through the heart and it went 30 yards and piled up. This in the 2009 trip, I'm shooting 91 pounds. Yeah. With okay. a compound bow. Wow. And in uh, my, my first era went totally inside the elephant. You know, a well-placed era yeah. with good kinetic energy and lots of momentum behind it can do a lot of damage. Yeah. So I went from that and I green hunted the rhino. And then my last one was the leopard. And I hunted eight nights before I was able to, to get an opportunity to leopard. And uh, it, wow. it was crazy. So, you know, after you do the big five, what is there to do? Well, that's not in life. What else is there to do? I mean, honestly, that's that's more than most people do their entire life. Like, I mean, any accomplishment, anything. Uh, and I, then we still have I another. We still have a bunch we got to fill in from you. But OK, now, so let's I did that in 27 days. So so you spent a long time in Africa. I did. The, the outfitter, um, Warthog Safaris, wanted me to do the entire big five with them. And us try to do it in the quickest time that we could. Our goal was to do it in under a month. So Man. I was on adrenaline for a month. I had a hard time sleeping. I, I was just wired. I cannot believe that. that it is was amazing. crazy. Yeah, we'll that... talk about it more later. Okay, we will, because we've got so much more to talk about. I mean, honestly, that's crazy. So if you've gotten this far in the podcast, that's enough. We're good. I mean, that's fantastic. No, I'm just kidding. We got more to more to cover. I want to talk. You got Team USA. You got you know your your archery your your uh, your trad archery journey. I want to hear about it all. Okay, so let's let's go on. Let's move on through. So that's compound. You're hunting. You are a hunter. You are a hunter. And no one's going to take that away from you. And I'm sure you got more hunting stories. Eighty two species. Eighty two species. And you're the bus. only, you're the first and only woman to do uh, big, the big five. five. Yes. In the world. In the world. With a boat. Yeah. Take that, everyone else. Take that, everyone else. I still have to get a buck. I got, I got to make sure I get a buck soon. All right. Okay. Listen. So talk to me about trad archery now. So how did you get into single string? So when. Uh, when you're, you're told, yeah. Yeah. When the guys got me started, right. it was like, I just. I just couldn't get enough of it. So then and did you, so, did, did you, did you know, any, did you have a coach for single string or anything like that? Or you just, no, nothing. No, I just, I had a coach for compound. Dan Hart started mm -hmm. working with me in 1993. Eight days later, I won my first national championship. The next month I won my first world championship. Now okay. I started as a bow hunter. In 1989, right. I shot my first deer with a bow. Mm -hmm. That was my first year really seriously shooting a bow. My dad had bought me a bow that didn't fit me, but I bought me a bow that fit in 89, and and then the journey, the hunting journey was on. I, I went to, uh, I worked for the wildlife agency. I was a, a wildlife biologist, a fisheries manager, um, environmental scientist. So wow. I, I worked in the outdoor arena and, um, I, I took a, 
one of the guys that I worked with is the one that introduced me to archery in the first place. But when I went to, uh, I took a position in fisheries with uh, the federal government with TVA and I got introduced to 3D archery then. And I, I, I just was fanatical. I lost, came in last and lost all my arrows that first competition. But after that, bought some targets, started shooting in the yard every day. And the second tournament I shot, I won. It's a it's champion's, like, cha that's a, the story of all champions. You know, it's like you, you have know, a winner's heart. You got a winner's uh, mentality. Yeah. That's fantastic. So that so, was with a longbow or with a recurve or? In the beginning, it was all compound. Oh, but that was compound. Yeah, yeah. In in 2011, okay. the guys give me the self bow. Okay, right, right, right. The first animal I shot with the self bow was uh, a cotton mouth. Hey, really? <laughs> yeah, we were ho we were hog hunting. Yeah, and of course, in the brush. Yeah. The day before, when we come out, we ran over a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. And then this cottonmouth comes out, and it's about to cross the road right where we're going out shortly. <laughs> and Mountain Man was videoing me, and he said, I don't think you can kill it. <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was my first critter with a self bow. And, and I was hunting with that self bow at home and saw the biggest buck that I'd ever had an opportunity to shoot at. And I shot him and my arrow bounced off. And I was shooting 43 pounds, mm -hmm. but I was shooting the arrows that I typically would have shot competition with. Okay. It, it, I was just shooting carbon arrows. I didn't, I didn't have anybody really mentoring me right. in traditional. They gave me the bow, turned me loose with it. And, and I just took some of my compound arrows and started shooting them. And uh, I could hit what I was aiming at, but, I hit that buck and the arrow bounced off and I made a post and uh, Tracy Belosky that owns, um, oh gosh, um, I can't think of the name of the company. It's in Michigan. She, um, St. Joe River Longbows. St. Joe, yeah, okay, yep. St. Joe River Longbows. Tracy heard me say that that arrow bounced off, and she surprised me at an event uh, at the uh, Hiawatha Sportsman's uh, Challenge in the Upper Peninsula. She surprised me with a, a St. Joe River Longbow. Nice. And nice. it didn't bounce off. <laughs> I started shooting a 53-pound St. Joe River longbow. <laughs> you are strong. I don't even shoot I that had no, no trouble penetrating. And I shot a fallow buck with it, and I've shot quail and pheasants and chuckers and rabbits. And... um when I started shooting competition, that's what I started shooting with. And it's way different shooting one or two arrows yeah. than shooting 40 shots. And I did pretty good the first 20 shots. I, I was doing really good. But by 40 shots, I could hardly pull the bow back. Yeah. And one of the men um, asked me uh, uh, why I was shooting so much poundage. And I told him, I said, well, this is all I've got, except for a self bow. And by that time, a guy had pulled my self bow back and had fractured the top limb on it. So 
that was what I had to shoot and I just shot it. Yeah. Um, and he asked me how I aimed and I said, I just look at the target and I just, when it feels good, I let go. <laughs> and he said, Joella, <laughs> if you want to be competitive in this game, you've got to have a method. And he said, you need a method. And I said, okay, tell me about a method. And he said, well, I gap. And he said, I find what my point on is and, and then I gap from there. And so I go home and I start working on developing gotcha. a method, still shooting 53 pounds. Wow. And I go to my first IBO trad world shooting 53 pound longbow and by day two my fingers are so blistered i i kept getting better every day but i it was miserable yeah i can imagine i can't imagine because it's so well, hot and sweaty and it's just up and down the hills and and then just having to be able to shoot that so how'd you do in that tournament well I did better every day. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. That's the way it and should I, be. I actually made day. it into the top five. Okay. I got to shoot the final day. And I mean, I was right at the bottom the first day. And then I moved up a whole lot. But I got to shoot the final day and I shot with Bon Gerard and um, uh, my buddy from uh, Mexico. Uh, Incarna. Oh, Incarna. Okay, nice. So I shot with Fawn and Incarna okay. at that event, my very first big traditional world championship. And I, I made it in the top five. That's great. And then I go to the IBO world and I make it into the top five shooting against the, the all the girls shooting. I was the only one shooting longbow. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was shooting um, recurve. Right. Okay. So I made it. I made it to fifth in that. And Calvin Smock and I met, and he said, "If you want to get serious about shooting this traditional stuff, you need a recurve." And he put put one of his bows in my hand, and I fell in love again. <laughs> so I had a, a CD riser, and I go to the to the ASA Classic, and I shoot the CD riser against the men. And I didn't finish last. Yeah. That's, I'm but sure you did really good. I, I, I really started seriously shooting after I got the CD in my hand. And yeah. I, I practiced almost every day. And the next year, I went out like a ball of fire. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Well, I I won all of the Triple Crown, the IBO Triple Crown events that I went to that year, but I didn't win the Triple Crown because my daughter had an emergency C-section and she called and, and well, she was afraid they were going to do a C-section. She had an emergency with a, a childbirth yep. and asked if I could come and I dropped, I was already in, at the ASA shoot in Alabama and I, I told my husband I need to go to Alaska and I dropped my schedule and, and drove to Nashville and got on a plane and went to Alaska and was there for my grandbaby to be born. Good for you. Good for you, mom. That is perfect. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. There's always so, archery. You know, I, I didn't get to shoot the second leg of the Triple Crown, but I won every one that I competed in. Yep, yep. And I won the world championship that year. And <laughs> and I won my first, uh, my first IBO Trad World that year. And, you know, it's, it's like, okay, let's just do it. So what year was that again? That was 16. Okay, so 16. Okay, so what have you been doing since then? So 17, I, I try out for the U.S. team. 
and I actually I signed up to try out for the U.S. team, and that's the first time that we took a team to uh, a, a full team to compete in the 3D World Championships, the World Archery 3D World Championships. Yep. So I was shooting at um, the Tennessee Classic, and I slipped going down a hill, and I tore the meniscus in my left knee. So I'd already signed up to try out for the U.S. team and I tore the meniscus. So then I have to have surgery. And as luck would have it, there were only three women signed up in the bare bow class. So that meant that I automatically had made the team. Mm -hmm. And I had surgery the day of the team trials and I spent the next four months doing rehab and I was in good shape come, come uh, France. Mm -hmm. I ended up 25th in France. I was, uh, Fon Gerard was the top American lady. I was second, and um, I, I can't remember the lady's name that was third. But we, at that point, there was only one longbow shooter, female longbow shooter on the team, and she was a young girl, and I actually worked with her as Laura Hughes. She's yeah, now shooting, doing amazingly well as a barebow shooter. Yeah. And uh, so I made the decision I'd go back to shooting longbow because the longbow score automatically counts for the US, for the team score. Yeah. So I could help the women's team out by putting in a, a good longbow score so I started shooting longbow and I I got a Jeffrey um bamboo long hunter and it's at um it's at 38 pounds at at 25 and three quarter inches okay so you're pulling 38 on the so I dropped my poundage down yeah and uh and I've been shooting that bow ever since until just shortly ago. I, I decided that I need to experiment and find out what's out there, find out if there's something that can give me better performance. And um, there, I'm trying different things. I've sure. got uh, I've got a bow on order, a timber point ordered mm -hmm. and um can't wait for it to get in where I can really. But you're sticking with longbow, obviously. I'm sticking with longbow. Right. Okay. And then you're on the U.S. national team longbow. Yes. I made the U.S. team in, uh, in 2019. And then I made the U.S. team again in 2022. That's amazing. That so amazing. there's three of us that have made all three U.S. teams. Uh, Dwayne Martin, Fon Gerard, and myself. Uh, you, the, the, you guys are giants, giants in, in this, traditional archery. It's just amazing. amazing this year has, has just been a phenomenal year. It, um, and there's a backstory that a lot of people don't know. Um, when COVID hit, yep. I developed some health issues, um, I got sick before they started talking about COVID mm -hmm. and I was trying, I never quit training after we got back from Canada. I just kept training. I was shooting all the time and my right hand started locking up on me. Um, my fingers would lock bent and I couldn't open my hand and it kept getting worse. And I called a chiropractor friend of mine and he told me to unstring my bow and put it away for six weeks, six to eight weeks and see if it got better. Well, it didn't get better. It just kept getting worse. And before long, both hands are affected and I, I couldn't shoot. I, I tried, I tried several times. I tried like I had a Genesis bow and I'd try shooting it, but the issue with my hands didn't get better. 
Mm-hmm. I finally went to the doctor in October and he said that I had um, um, some nerve issues and some compression issues. Right. And I end up finding that I had compression syndrome and I have um, issues with C4, 5, and 6. Right, your vertebrae. And so they put me on medicines and that just made me drugged and didn't help the pain and didn't help anything. But I started trying to figure out on my own what was going on. And I noticed anytime I had anything with sugar that my hands were worse. Really? So the last time my hands locked up on me, um really badly was in november of last year and i had eaten several coconut bonbons and i thought now there's got to be a link with sugar in this so i started researching and i i just eliminated sugar from my diet nice and i went to my chiropractor and my chiropractor sent me to a nutrition specialist, a holistic nutrition specialist. So I've gone a holistic route where I've absolutely changed what I eat and what I do in order to be able to shoot a bow again. So things started getting better. And I, in, in March, I started shooting a, a real light poundage longbow. In April, I decided if I was going to try out for the team, I really had to work my way back to my bow that I could compete with. So I went to the the single string boot camp and was really, really inspired coming out of it. So I, I, I am taking it slow until I get there. And when I get there, I go hog wild shooting, but my hands aren't bothering me. Until I'm shooting, I, I make the U.S. team in June, and I'm I'm doing okay. And then I go really nuts practicing because I I really know that I need to be better than I am if I'm gonna be competitive internationally. And I my hands I, my fingers start going numb on me because I'm shooting so much, and I end up changing tabs, putting an extra layer of leather in in my Yoast tab. Mm -hmm. I end up changing strings. Uh, Trevor makes me some triple uh, triple T strings that are, uh, that are bigger in diameter. And between the two of them, my hands get better, but the nutrition specialist puts me on some supplements to improve my nerve function and I'm getting stronger and stronger and smarter and smarter about what I eat. And that's good. You know, it, it's okay. Well, you, How about to be you honest with it? you? You are, you're a, you're a professional athlete, really. Right. You're, you're a professional athlete, so you should have a diet that that matches that uh-huh. your level of skill. So that's that's encouraging that you're doing that. And I think anyone listening too should think about their diet. I mean, we we too oh, often gosh. just just ignore it. I mean, there's I've had guys on this show, you know, I I bare bow at the bear at the at the single string uh, boot camp, you know, we'd have beers in between, you know, we're drinking yeah. that, eating bad food and stuff. So <laughs> you're doing good. You're doing good. I actually quit coffee. What? Don't I eliminated that. coffee. No, that's that's not trad. You can't be well, trad anymore. Yes, I have to be. Here's <laughs> what happened. I started having a lot of low back pain. Yeah. And um my I had eliminated coffee a few times before. Yeah. yeah. But my husband bought me a new coffee maker and yeah. and I loved pecan roast. And yep. so I'd started drinking coffee again. And then my low back started hurting a lot. And I thought, 
you know, I really listen to what my body's saying. It sounds like you do. Especially after the nutrition specialist. Yeah, it sounds like you do. Um, and I told him, I said, the only thing different is I've started drinking coffee again. So I'm going to not drink coffee. In two days, the back pain was gone. And he said, you are so full of crap. And I'm like, well, all I can say is I don't hurt now. Yeah. And he looked it up on the Internet. And when your adrenals are are really shot, caffeine is horrible for you. Well, I mean, here's here's the truth. I've seen people drink coffee and then go compete. Now, when I was a when I was a, a, a competitive uh, large bore rifle shooter, that was like an absolute like no. You like even the week of your shooting, you could not have caffeine at all. Now it's a it's a lot more finicky. I think maybe uh, you know rifle shooting, you know, a thousand yards. Then, but I, but sometimes I don't feel that way. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's a very small margin of error. If you've got any sort of kind of movement like that. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I see what you're getting at there with that so and the, the nutrition. I actually came from small bore rifle background. Yeah, there you go. You know, I, I yeah. went to college on a rifle scholarship and, and shot small bore. You shot end shoots? What was your rifle? I did. You on shoots. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, me and too. And then I. I shot um, a fine work valve uh, air rifle. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. So I went from competitive rifle shooting and got involved in archery and yeah, you. That's a, it's a, a, that's that's they're so linked and similar, right? Yes. So it's kind of cool. All right, cool. So hey. you know, here's here's something that's kind of cool. I'm the oldest woman on the U.S. team. Okay. There was only one guy on the team older than me. The the two of us old farts really pay attention to to our diet because we both realize that I'm 61. Yeah. You know, things are different now than they were. Yeah, sure. Your body, your body changes and stuff ago. like that, and it is important. And I think everyone needs to, like I said, they uh, do. To, yeah, nutrition. So speaking of that, so your last, so where did you compete last with Team USA? I went to Italy. 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 Oh, was it fun? Oh gosh, yes, it was so much fun. Good, good, good. Boy, I learned a bunch there, though. Yeah. Don't ever go to a foreign country without a spare pair of glasses exactly. if you need your glasses to shoot really you didn't have a I lost my glasses <gasps> oh, shit. that's awful I, I had an uh i was starting to shoot with contacts but i had an eye infection right before we left to go to italy and the optometrist told me to not use the contacts until i absolutely had to to give my eyes a chance to recover and so i i had to shoot with my glasses my bifocals and i i took them off and put them in my tote bag when we were going out to the range we weren't going to shoot we were just going out in the bright sunlight and yeah. the sun was aggravating my eyes so i put on sunglasses they my glasses fell out of the tote bag and it took me until after the first day of of qualifications to to get them back although they had found them the okay all right the so, very next morning so that in, obviously impacted your, your it definitely did yeah. i i was That's miserable shooting with contacts but you know I, I came back i got better every day and yeah, and that's all that matters. Um, we're kind of running a little bit out of time here, so I want to get back to I want to I want to touch on another amazing part of your life, and that is your your uh, uh, NTS uh, Level Four Coaching Certificate, yes. and and so as and that's in itself is amazing because it's really hard to get that. That's yes, not, it they, is. They don't give those away. 
I mean, I have an oh, NT, I have a level two coaching. I felt like they gave that away over a weekend, but level three, level four, it's just, do you have to, do you got to go to Chula Vista for that or? I did. I went to Chula Vista, but I spent two months studying every day before I went to Chula Vista and then eight days in Chula Vista. And, you know, when Coach Lee says, Basically. you need to forget everything you think you know about archery. If you want to pass this class, you've got to do it my way. Yeah. And, and how do you how do you erase thirty years of you just got uh, you get, indoctrination? I know you. Have it to. was hard, but but you did it right. And so, are you I shooting? Do, NT, are, do you still shoot NTS? Oh yes, baby. Okay, you do. So okay, all right. And and do you coach? I do. Okay, so I I, I know we can we can touch on, it, but we're running out of time. So I want to get all this stuff in. So you're a coach. Are you looking for more students? Absolutely. Do you do you do anything online? I I can. I really prefer the first uh, my first meeting to be an in person okay. because there's there's just so much that's different about NTS than than just going in the backyard and shooting a bow. I get that. Okay, but so, but I will work with somebody online if if they want to work online. Yeah, because there's so many people that will hear this right, and they'll be like, "Well, I need a coach. I'm looking for a coach." And but you know they can't travel to you. Where are you, by right. the way? Where, where, I where, live in Cumberland City, Tennessee. Cumberland, it, don't they? Isn't there a song about that wagon wheel? Well, yeah, but that's that's <laughs> the Cumberland Gap. The Cumberland. I live Gap. in Cumberland City, which yeah. is. Uh, close to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Okay. All right. So you're in the heart of it. Um, I am. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm real close to Pappy's. Yeah, you yeah, that's easy to get the Pappies for you, which is which is IBO traditional world champion uh uh shooting. It, Usually it's there, right? At Pappies. Hey it, it's gonna be in West Virginia again. Okay. All right. But it's a longer drip. Pappy's uh, is a great place. It is good. I, I I've shot there. Hey, um, so I want to get to. I want to ask you one more thing before we 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 wrap this up. I want you to give some advice to 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 new archers. Like, if I was, I want to get better right away. If there was one thing you could say, hey Mick, work on this, and you're going to get better. What sort of from a, a a professional coach like you would would you would you say to me? First thing is I'd tell you to find you a good coach. Okay. And Perfect. and work with a good coach because if you learn good form and a good shot process from the beginning, you don't have to break bad habits. So starting with a coach is a great way. Um, the other another thing would be don't overbow yourself. Right. Uh, and and coming from somebody that but has experience over bowing, <laughs> um, you can learn better form and become way more consistent by starting with a lighter poundage and then working your way up. So I don't believe that the first bow that you buy will necessarily be the bow that you want to end up with. I, I I think I I like recurves for because because you can swap limbs on them. I I like the ILF system because a person can buy light poundage limbs and then when you get stronger and you get a good shot developed, then you can you can buy other limbs without having to reinvest from the start yeah, again yeah yep yep that's it, a it, good beginner choice absolutely um that's that's you, no you that's good to, that's great that's great it's, you it's, have to learn to get your body into alignment mm -hmm. yeah and 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 study the nts yes get into get into alignment get into alignment uh, that's 
I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But no great advice. I always tell everyone, you know, get a coach that could possibly be the, that's the best advice you could possibly get. Cause you're right. There's so many bad habits. Hey, I want to thank you for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. I think we could talk for another four hours, but oh, yeah. I try and try. The, the reason we call this quick shots is so that I can get to know you really quick. Where can people uh, track you down online? Um, Joella Bates on Facebook or um, Joella's Journey on Facebook cool. Um, cool. or Joe Camps on Facebook or Joella Bates Archery.com. You're incredibly impressive. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Hey, for anyone that stuck around, I uh, want to thank you for sticking around. And just remember our sponsor, archerypass.com. If you're looking for trad gear and stuff like that, they got an awesome website. So go check them out too. So thanks everyone very much and hunt the good stuff. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>